Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today's deck was recorded during the early access event, so thanks again to Wizards of the Coast for allowing me to participate. I had access to a fully unlocked account to preview the new cards from the Brothers War expansion, and I've got an exciting one in store for you today. Gonna preview Mishra, claimed by Gix in a Melt deck. The 4-mana 3-5 says whenever we attack, each opponent loses X life and we gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures, so Mishra himself doesn't have to be attacking, so so can get immediate advantage out of it the turn we play him. And then Mishra, if it can attack alongside Phyrexian Dragon Engine, can meld into Mishra lost to Phyrexia. Let's first take a look at the Dragon Engine, a 3 mana 2-2 two -two artifact creature with a double strike. And when the engine enters a battlefield from our graveyard, we may discard our hands if we do draw 3 cards, and it conveniently has unearth for 5 mana. So there's a few ways we can sequence to get Mishra melded. If we go turn 3 Dragon Engine, turn for Mishra, Turn 5 attack, if all goes according to plan, we could already have Mishra lost to Phyrexia on the battlefield. Even if the opponent answers the Dragon Engine on turn 5, we might be able to unearth it, in which case it attacks with haste, and we could still melt Mishra. So that's our primary game plan. And then let's take a look at the payoff here. Is it worth all the effort? Mishra is a 9-9, that when it enters the battlefield or attacks, and of course it does enter the battlefield tapped and attacking, which doesn't enable its attack trigger, but does enable its enters the battlefield trigger, so we get one each turn basically. And we get to choose three modes out of the six different ones here, including target opponent discards two cards, Mishra deals three damage to any target, we can destroy an artifact or planeswalker, creatures we control gain menace and trample until end of turn, creatures we don't control get minus one minus one until end of turn and finally create two tapped power stone tokens so a ton of powerful modes to choose from and we'll often be able to end the game on the spot as we meld mishra so that's our main game plan and then taking a look at the rest of our deck we still have a few new additions from the brothers war including in our removal we've got three copies of go for the throat replacing infernal grasp as a way to deal with non-artifact creatures of course there will be a few artifact creatures nowadays that this won't be able to answer but hopefully we can still manage with cards like lightning strike cut down and even the removal that Blood Tithe Harvester provides by potentially shrinking down an opposing creature if we sacrifice it. Of course, also playing the full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which helps us assemble the combo with a second chapter when we discard up to two cards and then draw that many. And we never feel bad discarding a Phyrexian Dragon Engine to the second chapter since we can always unearth it later and then also potentially refresh our hands. And then the Reflection of Kiki Jiki has great synergy with Harvester, as we all know by now. And then we also have two copies of the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. It's a 7 drop, but we can cast it for 3 mana thanks to Prototype, in which case it's a 3 3 with Menace and Life Link, and Ward forcing the opponent to pay life equal to the Flesh Gorger's power. And if we ever do get to 7 mana, maybe thanks to the treasure tokens that the Shaman provides, we can have a 7 5 with those same abilities, so it becomes very problematic for the opponent to get rid of it. And then, of course, still playing two copies of Shieldred, also great synergy with a second chapter from Fable gaining us a ton of life. Underdog, another creature we don't mind discarding to our Reflection of Kiki Jiki, can also draw us extra cards to hopefully assemble our Dragon Engine plus Mishra. And then, as we mentioned, a few other removal spells with Lightning Strike can also deal 3 damage, can maybe combine with the Double Striking Dragon Engine to kill a 5 toughness creature if that gets in the way. And then a cut down can deal with smaller creatures. Evolve Sleeper, another great mana sink that we can play early and can draw additional cards to help us find the two card combo. And then our mana base, pretty straightforward, couple dual lands and then a Crucible and Abandoned Mire, so it hasn't really changed with a new expansion. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. No sighting of Mishra or the Dragon Engine, but a fine curve. And a turn one officer I'm fine to cut down here. Make sure we can keep curving out. And then if I play underdog I don't need to deal myself any damage. Sure. Next turn flash gorger and then maybe harvester the turn after. 
opponent passes. They might have the 2 1 1 tokens at instant speed, which I'm happy to trade for underdog. And yep, there's the reinforcements. It's their opponent on Soldier Tribal. Having some removal for the key creatures is important. Could see Brutal Cathar, another soldier, or a Valiant Veteran, and a Frontliner. Okay. So how about we attack, and then if they want to block or double block, we can punish them by killing Veteran at instant speed. And then still play Harvester. I would love to find one of our curve toppers here. Shieldred, Mishra, Dragon Engine, all great. Even a reflection of Kiki Jiki can help us find more action and maybe eventually copy Harvester. So our opponent's playing a second caller in the trenches to pump the team. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, I guess they felt like they were too far behind already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Fable gives us a good chance of finding a uh, dragon engine. Ideally, maybe discard it so we can unearth on turn 5. Up against... Bant. Looks like a legendary deck. Go for Fable. That resolves. And so far it seems like Cutdown's not going to have many targets. Although we'll wait and see what type of deck our opponent's playing. Alright, Brutal Cathar, good answer to the Shaman. So I guess we'll hang on to Cutdown still. Um, so what do I get rid of? Probably want a second Fable. Harvester's good with Fable. So do I just discard a Flesh Gorger here? Do I also discard Mishra? And maybe wait to find a second copy once we also find a Dragon Engine, since right now it's not doing a whole lot for us. Okay. And then I guess Fable keep up cut down is fine. And if they play another Brutal Cathar, I can destroy it before it exiles my Shaman. It's gonna be a Root Coil instead. And a Circle of Confinement gets rid of our Shaman. I think I kill Root Coil instead of Brutal Cathar, deny them the mana, and then I should be able to take care of the Brutal Cathar with Harvester at some points. And we'll discard a couple lanes. Could see the benefit of hanging on to Abandoned Mire. Okay, there's a Dragon Engine. So I can play that alongside Harvester. And next turn we've got a few fun options, including copying Harvester. And then Abandoned Mire eventually to get back Mishra is going to be our plan. Not going to be easy to assemble, but uh, we're going to try. Opponent lets it switch to Knight. Found another Dragon Engine. So, step one, probably copy Harvester. See if there's a response. Take out Moonrage Brute. Mm, 
And then now we can attack. Don't know if I want to attack with Harvester in case of a Wandering Emperor. Might be better to keep that around untapped. And then I guess after they took the damage, I go for Abandoned Mire, get back Mishra. As opposed to play another Dragon Engine. Alright, opponent had Wandering Emperor after all. Could still discard Engine with a Blood Token. And then uh, unearth it. Although that's gonna require double red. Could have sequenced my mana slightly differently. So we still have another Reflection to go with Harvester. And now a Platoon Dispenser. Okay, still dies to a copied Harvester. I guess now at 7 Toughness it survives. So we'll need one more Blood Token. Milled Double Shieldred. I mean, I think we still have to try for Mishra, even though Shieldred might actually be the more powerful card. So play Mishra. And I can copy Harvester. Could activate both Harvesters to kill Dispenser, and then Dragon Engine kills Emperor. Sure. Just get it out of the way. Then I think it's okay to play the land since I might be discarding the engine to look for a second red if they focus on the tapped engine. All their opponent has a lot to worry about. Aw, opponent explodes before we get a chance to meld onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play and has both Dragon Engine and Mishra, so I'm gonna have to keep. And then uh, I guess I'll play Crucible in case we draw Swamp so I don't have to take damage to cast my 2-drop. Well, hopefully we just get to curve out Engine into turn for Mishra. But we'll see if our opponent has a bit of interaction here. Circle deals with Harvester. I think I still like Dragon Engine. Could also go for a Flash Gorger first. But this has the highest upside if we get to curve out with Mishra. Alright, Urza, Lord Protector. I can still attack into and then Lightning Strike to finish it off. Opponent takes it. So in that case, probably another Dragon Engine. Hits harder than Flash Gorger. Let's see if they've got a turn 4 a Might Stone and Weak Stone here. Because that would set up a Melded Urza on the following turn. Yep. Yeah. Gonna take out a Dragon Engine. So this Lightning Strike, not quite enough to kill Urza. There's a Fable. So, Engine Attack. Sadly never found our fourth mana, so we'll give Fable a try. Their opponent's one mana short of transforming since their land came into play tapped. So we have one more turn to find an answer to Urza. Okay, so discard. Lightning Strike could still help if they block, so I think Flesh Gorger and Sleeper go. And then attack, hoping they block. Okay, 
So I guess we'll let damage happen first. See if we can take out Urza. All right, play Harvester, and then next turn, hoping to get Mishra going. Opponent actually gaining a life of Circle, the rare circumstance where they exile the Vampire with it. Now we cannot copy legendary creatures with Reflection, so. No point in kind of sandbanging Mishra to set up a surprise meld. Another Nightstone and Weakstone kills Harvester. And a Circle. Okay, at least we can still unearth a Dragon Engine. So we could still meld a Mishra in two turns. Sure, I'll play a land out. All right, let's cross our fingers here. Ooh, storm the festival. What else do they find? Another mindstone and weak stone probably kills Mishra. Quite fitting, minus five, minus five, just enough. And then I could discard Fable to a blood token. Since next turn I might want to unearth the Dragon Engine to refresh my hand anyways. Um, sure. Another Fable. And Harvester. Well, in that case, go for Harvester. Put on gains more life. Copy, take out Surge Engine. And I'll still be able to play Fable. Well, we got very close to melding Mishra. But opponent found an answer with Storm the Festival. And there's another one. Can they find a backup Urza? Although Harvester plus Reflection can take care of it. It's going to be a Brutal Cathar instead. Probably goes for Reflection of Kikijiki itself. There's a Flesh Gorger, which I'm kind of close to just casting for 7. But uh, yeah, I guess our opponent explodes. We would still be able to potentially get back our Dragon Engine, hit for quite a bit, and eventually our Reflection plus Harvester would get it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, I'll keep this. Bit of removal, Fable to help us find Mishra, and our Dragon Engine, which I'm happy to discard and unearth, or we can play it depending on the situation. Turn one pack leader, so green aggro. So I should have good targets for a go for the throats. I'll take two, maybe kill a beast caller on turn two instead. Or a loam speaker. And then go for Fable. The sooner the better. Can still potentially clear a path if her opponent plays a larger blocker. Jewel Thief, okay. Don't love killing a Jewel Thief, but maybe that's what it takes. And we found Mishra, so we're actually very close to melding. If I discard Dragon Engine Flesh Gorger, just need to find a land, basically, to get there next turn. There we go. And then I'm assuming a melded Mishra will win us the game. Can our opponent find an answer? Beast Caller's not it. And a Kodama. So they've got lots of power and toughness. But we've got a melded Mishra. Let's go. Do I want to discard my hands? Not really. But I'll gladly attack and send in the Shaman too, why not? 
Oh no, our opponent explodes before we even get the Mishra trigger. When will we ever get to see it in action? On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, our hand seems quite promising. We've got both the Dragon Engine and Mishra. Even an underdog early to maybe distract our opponents. Wouldn't mind finding a Fable of the Mirror Breaker either. To maybe discard Engine and unearth on turn 5. Opponent with a turn 1 consider. While a blue deck with a lot of instants can have a lot of interaction, making it harder to assemble or melt pair. Blue black can be quite controlling. So we'll hit for 3, play engine, and hope it at least doesn't get exiled. Okay, that resolved. And another consider. Okay, so we'd love to find another swamp to play either Shieldred or Mishra. Opponent might be playing kind of a blue-black draw to synergy deck. As the Brothers War introduced quite a few new tools. Ooh, never mind, a Runo deck. And yeah, the prototype creatures are perfect with it. So what happens exactly? They can transform it. Yeah, we'll let them transform if that means I get to transform Mishra. I think that's a fair exchange. Alright, no interaction please. Runo transforms into a 3-5. Can create a tapped and attacking token of another attacking creature. So that shouldn't happen just yet. Ah, opponent's got the Runa's Vortex kicked to send Mishra packing. Could have tried to play Shieldred as distraction first. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll just kill Lord of the Deep now. And attack. Play Harvester. And at least we're applying a good bit of pressure. And this Lightning Strike might be able to close out the game. There's a Flesh Gorger, two mana left, and our own Flesh Gorger. So, good Lightning Strike, Flesh Gorger, and attack for the win. Good attack, what happens? They block, let's say, Dragon Engine. Yeah, I guess attacking is fine here. And then I could also play Shieldred if something weird happens. So, can let damage happen. So your opponent's at 2. Could kill him with a Lightning Strike, although they could have a Negate. So we'll play Shieldred instead, if they counter this. Alright, just the Impulse Stroke, that saves him. But we still have a Lethal Lightning Strike. Waiting in the wings. So we got close to melding Mishra once again. But our opponent had the Ronal's Vortex. Although, like most other games, despite getting close to melding, I think we're still gonna get there regardless. So, I guess let's see if this works. That would make it easy. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing Mishra, but fine hand otherwise. Sleeper, turn 2, potentially level up, turn 3, I've got a couple options. And if our opponent's got a bounce spell, I'm happy to just replay Evolved Sleeper. So turn 3, we'll have to choose between Flash Gorger and Dragon Engine against Blue-Red. I see Iconoclast, could also be worth taking out. I guess the Dragon Engine lines up slightly better against a bunch of tokens, because Menace 
means they could still potentially double block. Can attack first. Yeah, on the other hand, Engine dies to a 2 damage burn spell, whereas Flash Gorger does not. So maybe we'll still try this. And then hopefully next turn pick up a land so I can maybe double spell killing Iconoclast. Or play Shield Red, also an option. Yeah, it does make a token of artifacts as well. And Yotia declares war. Three artifacts in play now. So yeah, I can kind of see where that's going. So regretting not killing the Iconoclast right away. Could play a Fable now, which is probably still worthwhile. And we'll take a bit of a beating. Underdog and Dragon Engine I'm happy enough discarding, since we can always get them back. Another Yotia declares war. Alright. What does it kill? Goes for Evolved Sleeper. Do we get to keep our Shaman? Or is there more interaction in our future? A Surge Engine. Fair enough. Another shield roots. I think I still keep backup shield roots in case something bad happens to it. And then attack, see if they want to trade. Could also just kill the surge engine with a lightning strike and then go for the throat iconoclast. Playing shield root could still work out better. Let's see if there's interaction. There's not. Opponent drops to 7. But we could take a significant hit here. Ooh, mechanized warfare. So all their artifact tokens now also deal more damage. Yeah, I mean, this Iconoclast certainly did a ton of work this game. Anything else? A lizard blades. There's a land. So can attack with the shaman token. Although the lizard blades would just kill it basically. So we'd have to lightning strike the blades in order to be able to attack in the first place and then still trades for a token. How about we play harvester and pass with a lightning strike available and go for the throat. At this point killing Iconoclast probably doesn't matter anymore. And we're close to maybe burning our opponent out thanks to the shield root triggers. Opponent's down to five. Mishra's Foundry can turn into a creature. And our opponent's going to maybe go all in on the Surge Engine, which we could still Lightning Strike. So let's do some math. If that becomes unblockable, deals 6 damage, puts me to 5. I don't think I'm quite dead, but it's probably safer to just uh, take it out with a Lightning Strike. Even though Lightning Strike upstairs would kill our opponent next turn. Can probably survive another turn here. Opponent does have one card left. Red mana untapped. They're gonna sit back. There's Mishra. Well, could we get there at long last? Play Mishra 
and then I probably have to attack with a shaman token just so I can next turn get the dragon engine back from the graveyard although the shaman just kind of attacks into lizard blades and dies so I guess I would harvester the blades first and then I might as well copy the shaman to make more mana. If I played Mishra first, I could have drained the opponent to death. So maybe there was a world where just going Mishra attack with all except Shieldred and then Shieldred can finish him off. But we're here to see a Melden Mishra, so I'm gonna give myself the best chance of doing it. Opponent falls to three. At this point we don't care about Shieldred, we only care about Mishra and Dragon Engine. Mechanized Warfare number two. So now their tokens deal three damage. They could still animate Mishra's Foundry. It's going to be Fable of the Mirror Breaker instead. And do we finally get to untap and meld? It looks like it. Let's make it quick. Attack with Mishra and Dragon Engine. And let's meld. And there's the triggers. Awesome. Minus one, minus one. And then three damage to any targets. And then even a third mode. We can go for creatures you control, gain menace and trample until end of turn. That looks good. Sweet. We did it at long last. It took us way too many games to finally see the melded creature here, but props to our final opponent, Bearded Husky. Thanks for sticking through it. So yeah, it's not the easiest combo to assemble, since either the opponent's long dead before you actually get there, or they have a sufficient amount of interaction for what is, at the end of the day, a 4-mana creature that's pretty easy to interact with in most standard games. So not quite as reliable as the Urza meld, since it requires us to go through the attack step, which is a lot more complicated than just playing Urza and making a bunch of mana to eventually activate it, but still a ton of fun if we finally get to see it in action. And I think Fable of the Mirror Breaker is kind of the perfect fit alongside our Dragon Engine as we can discard it and unearth for value and kind of just fits into the aggressive style anyways. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.